Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video, I'm going to talk about all the different jogger pants that I've made over the years. I did one of these kinds of videos before, I think it was a couple years ago, and I talked about different t-shirts that I made. And I realized the other day that I've made jogger pants out of four different patterns, and I thought it would be really fun to share them and share the differences between them, do a little compare and contrast. Let's get started. So the first pattern I'm going to talk about is the Huds and Pants pattern, and this is a pattern by True Bias. It's been out probably since about 2014 because that's when I first started making them, and now I think it's just a really classic pattern in the indie sewing community. It first came out for women, but they've now also released versions for men and for kids. So this pattern now goes up to a 59.5 inch hip and I originally made a size 10 with no adjustments. So this is the first pair I ever made and I made these back in 2014. So they're a little bit worn now. I noticed there's a hole on the backside, um, but I do still wear them and really enjoy them. So the pattern comes in two versions, a full length and a cropped, and I made these first ones in a cropped length because I didn't have a whole lot of fabric. And I also did a contrast fabric for the waistband, the cuffs, and the little pocket detail because I had that shortage. My second version of the Hudson Pants are a Fair Isle sweater knit fabric. And again, I did a contrast for the waistband and the pocket detail and cuffs. And this is a really nice way to go if your fabric doesn't have a whole lot of stretch. I would definitely recommend using a contrasting fabric for your waistband and cuffs that's extra stretchy. Plus it just gives like a nice extra detail to the garment. These are also from 2014 and showing some wear and they're not quite as soft as they used to be, but I do really love the pattern on this fabric and I've worn them a lot. So for the Fair Isle version, I made the full length version and I added three inches to the leg. And I think that really works well for my height. So this last pair of heads and pants are just in a classic gray sweatshirt fabric. And this time, because the fabric had enough stretch, I used the same fabric for the waistband, cuffs, and pocket detail. Um, I have the same kind of drawstring for these as I do for my second ones. And it's just a pretty thin drawstring. And I don't actually put the drawstring in all of my pants. Um, but for the first one, I bought this half inch cording and I really feel like it's too thick. I never bothered taking it out, but um, I just thought it was too thick for this pair of pants. So I recommend something a little bit thinner just to reduce bulk at the waist. I think the Hudson Pants pattern is really great. Last Christmas, I made a pair for my mom and a pair for my dad using the men's version and they both like them. I really enjoy mine and I wear them all the time. So again, it's available up to a 59.5 inch hip and it comes in two versions, a full length and a crop. My next pair is the Monsell Joggers and these are in the book, A Beginner's Guide to Sewing with Knitted Fabrics. And this is by Wendy Ward. And I was given this book as, as part of the blog tour for the book when it was released and I highly, highly recommend it. I wish that I had this book when I was starting out sewing knits because it does a really great job of teaching you all the techniques you need to know to make a variety of patterns. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it also has a lot of great patterns included. So I think this is a really great book and it should definitely be on your shelf if you sew with knitted fabrics. And the pattern for these joggers goes up to a 51 inch hip. So my version of the pants are in a stretch velvet for the body and then for the waistband, the pocket detail and the cuffs, it's just a matte black stretchy fabric. So I made a size 39.5 to match my hip measurement and I added 1.5 inches to the rise and two inches to the leg. So a couple things that I really like about this pattern, I like the curve on the pocket opening I think the cur or the opening on the Hudson is a little bit straighter. So I like that this is curved. I think that's a nice design detail. And then I also like that the cuffs are extra long. Um, I find that they really stay on place better with this longer cuff. So again, I think this is a great pattern. I've only made it one time. I think I kind of forget about it because it's in a book sometimes, but 
They're really nice. I love the soft feel of the velvet. It just feels kind of luxurious. So even if you're lounging, it feels kind of fancy in this velvet fabric. And I was given this velvet fabric as part of the book tour um, and it was donated by or gifted by Minerva Fabrics. The next pattern I'm going to talk about is the Mel Joggers and this is by Seamwork. And if you're not familiar with Seamwork, it's an online community and monthly magazine and they release two new patterns every month and you could buy them individually or if you subscribe to the magazine community, then you get um, credits every month and they really build up fast so you can really get access to a ton of patterns. It's I really enjoy it. I've been a member since the beginning and the Mel Joggers have been one of my favorite patterns. Um, so I made these I believe in 2020. Again it's a pretty classic jogger style. This pattern goes up to a 58 inch hip and I made a size 8. And on this first pair, I added an inch and a half to the rise and two inches to the legs. So these ones fit, they sit like really at my natural waist. And I really like that look, but sometimes it doesn't always feel comfortable, especially at the end of the day. If I had a big meal, it might just feel a little tight around the waist and I would rather they sit a little bit lower. But I do really like this pair and I've worn them a lot. I do not have a drawstring on these, but I did put the buttonholes in. So if I decide later on that I want to add a drawstring, I can. So that's a little tip when you're making your joggers. Um, always put the buttonholes in, even if you don't have a drawstring yet. The one thing I don't like about the design on these is that they don't have a little fabric binding to detail the pocket. The pockets are really nice and deep, so I really like that but I wish that they had a little um, extra detail right here. So instead of having a piece of fabric like the other joggers that I shared, you just top stitch the opening. And I just don't really like the look of that that much. I also prefer the length of the cuffs in the Monsal joggers to these ones. And I especially noticed that with my second pair, which I'll show you right now. So this is my latest pair of joggers and this is made in a really thick, cozy fabric. Um, it's like a sweatshirting fleece, so super, super soft on the inside. And I used this fabric to make my mom a pair of Hudson pants for Christmas one year, and she loves them, and I had enough left over, so I decided to make myself a pair, and I've been wearing them pretty much nonstop because they're just so soft and warm. So for this version of the Mill Joggers, I added on a little detail that matches the waistband and cuffs. And I just um, cut a strip of fabric and made sure that it stretches the most going this way and cut it a little bit shorter than the opening. And then when you stitch it to the pocket, you stretch it a little bit. So, um, so I like that I have that added detail on there now. And it's really while wearing these that I felt like the cuff was riding up a lot and that if it had been a longer cuff, it probably would stay down around my ankles a lot. But, um, but having like stuff right up around my ankles happens to me pretty frequently. And I think that's probably just due to my height, um, that maybe I should make them even a little bit longer. So talking about pattern adjustments for these, I made the same size as for the gold ones but I did not lengthen the rise at all because I didn't want it to be high on my waist. And when I first tried them on, I thought it wasn't gonna work, but I actually like wearing them and I'm totally okay with it now. I think maybe I could have done just like three quarters of an inch um, length adjustment on the rise. And for these, I also added two inches to the length of the leg, um, which I think is probably pretty good, but maybe if I added another inch, I wouldn't have it kind of riding up on my leg. Or maybe if I split the difference and added a little length to the cuff and a little length to the leg, it would stay down on my ankle a little bit better. All right, my last pair of joggers are a hack of my summer sweatsuit pattern. So the pattern is for a racerback tank top and short shorts that are made out of knit fabric. And I did a couple of hacks for them, one for wide leg pants and one for these jogger pants. I've really enjoyed these. So the big difference between these joggers and the others is that these don't have pockets and they don't have a side seam. 
So each leg is just made out of one piece of fabric. So they have the cuffs and the waistband just like the others, but the leg is more simple. So I really like wearing these pants for sleeping. Um, you know, when you're sleeping, it's kind of nice to have something that's a little more streamlined. And the only thing that's a problem is that they ride up while I'm sleeping and will even like ride up all the way over my calf. So that's the only thing. If I make them again, I'll probably just adjust the pattern to be a little bit longer. Um, the fabric is just a really nice lightweight fabric. I even made a loot box top like t-shirt out of it. So it's really nice and comfortable for sleeping. If you're interested in this pattern, it's available in my shop and it goes up to a 58 inch hip. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and a little peek at all the jogger pants that I've made over the last like seven years. I honestly love all of them. I think they're all great patterns. They have little differences, but they can all be tweaked to really um, fit your own personal preferences. Again, there are tons of links down in the show notes. And if you want to make a sweatshirt to match your jogger pants and have a little sweatsuit, I'm offering 20% off my Ali sweatshirt pattern this month when you're subscribed to the newsletter. So there's also a link down below to sign up for my weekly newsletter. And every month there's a new discount code for a different pattern. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you enjoyed the video, I hope that you hit the like button. And if you haven't already, I'd be so honored if you subscribe to the channel as well. Happy sewing.